Hi, my name is Driel, and today in this section, we'll be looking at the real numbers system. Our objectives will be sets of real numbers, coordinate systems, appropriate viewing windows, routes, and the distance and midpoint formulas. The real number system has evolved over the course of time. It started off as the natural numbers, which included the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, and so on. And then came the whole numbers, which included the natural numbers as well as 0. After that, people created the integers to include the negative numbers. And then rational numbers came along to include fractions. Finally, the real number system was introduced. The real number system is a system that can be shown using a number line. Using the number line, all coordinates on the number line match up to a real number, and all real numbers match up to a location on the number line. Here you see the integers listed out on the number line, but the numbers in between the integers are included as well in the real number system. If you're to take two of these number lines and place them together at form right angles, what you'll get is a coordinate system. Here you see a two-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system. The horizontal axis is referred to as the x-axis, and the vertical axis is referred to as the y-axis. In doing it this way, the graph or the, the plane is divided into four regions. We call these regions quadrants. Here's the first quadrant, the second, the third, and then finally the fourth quadrant. Since the Cartesian coordinate plane extends infinitely in all directions, we can only look at a portion of it at the time. The same is true when using a graph and calculator. We call the portion of the plane that we're looking at the viewing window. We'll use the following abbreviations when looking at viewing windows. X min will stand for the minimum value of X. X max, the maximum value of X. X scale is the scale on the X axis, which refers to the distance between the tick marks. Y min is the minimum value of Y. Y max is the maximum value of Y. And y scale is the scale on the y-axis, or the distance between the tick marks there. Let's now go ahead and take a look at what we're going to refer to as our standard viewing window. Here we see the x min, x max by y min, y max notation, and we're going to call our standard viewing window negative 10 to 10 on the x-axis and negative 10 to 10 on the y-axis. We we'll use an x scale of 1 and a y scale of 1 as well. Often throughout the text, we'll be using calculators. Calculators have the ability to express our rational and irrational numbers as decimal approximations. What we need to do is take a look at how to write these decimal approximations and review the steps to rounding. Let's look at this next slide. Here we're asked to round these three numbers to the nearest tenth, nearest hundredth, and nearest thousand. The first number we're given is 1.3782, and we're at first asked to round to the nearest tenth. In order to do this, we've got to locate the tenth position, which is where the three is located, then look to the number to the right of that, if that number is 5 or greater, we'll round the 3 up to a 4. If the number is less than 5, we'll keep the number of 3. Since there's a 7 to the right of it, that's greater than 5, so we need to round the 3 up to a 4. So this number would be 1.4 when rounded to the nearest tenth. To do the nearest hundredth, we'll follow the same process, but just use the appropriate place value. So here, the hundredth position, we're at the uh, second position after the decimal, so we're looking at the number 7. And then going one space to the right of that, we have an 8, so we need to round this one up as well. So 1.37 will be rewritten as 1.38. Doing the nearest thousandth, we go out to the thousandth place value, which is where the 8 is located. Look to the right of that, and we have a value of 2. That's less than 5, so there's no need to round up here. So we'll rewrite the number as 1.378. Following the same process for the next value, 201.6666 rounding this to the nearest tenth, we look at the value uh, in the tenth spot as a six, and then to the right of that is a six, so we need to round up. So ne the nearest tenth would be 201.7. Using the nearest hundredth, again, we have a six in the hundredth spot, and the number to the right is a six, so we'll round up again. So we have 201.67. And then for the nearest thousandth, six is in the thousandth position as well, and to the right of that we have a six, and since that's greater than five, we'll round this number up. So our number here is 201.667. The last value we're asked to use is 0 0.0819. And when asking to round this to the nearest tenth, there's a zero in the tenth position. And to the right, there's an eight. So we need to round up. So 0 0.08 will round up to become 0 0.1. Then doing the nearest hundredth, there's an eight in the hundredth position with a one to the right. 
again, since 1 is less than 5, we don't need to round up. So 0 0.0819 becomes 0 0.08 when we round to the nearest hundredth. And then rounding this number to the nearest thousandth, we look at the number in the thousandths position, which is the 1. And then to the right of it, we have a 9, which is greater than 5. So we'll round the 1 up to a 2. And this answer becomes 0 0.082. What we're going to do now is use a calculator to approximate some roots. Here in this example, we're asked to use a calculator to approximate each root to the nearest thousandth. The first one is the square root of 23. The second uh, example is the cube root of 87. And then the third example is the fourth root of 12. So in order to do this, what we'll do is we'll take out the calculator and we'll type in the square root of 23. OK, so the square root of 23 entered into the calculator gives us a rather long decimal number, 4.79583153. But we've been asked to round these to the nearest thousandth. So the uh, value in the thousandth position is the 5. And after that to the right is the number 8. So we're going to round that up. So the square root of 23 will be rewritten as 4.796. Now we're going to use the calculator to compute the cube root of 87. OK, so using that, we'll do. Uh, cube root of 87. And we get the calculator to give us the value 4.43104762. But rounding that to the nearest thousandth, we get 4.431. Now in the last example, we're asked to look at the fourth root of 12. So going to the calculator and using that to compute the fourth root of 12, the calculator gives us the answer 1.86120978, but rounding that to the nearest thousandth, we end up with 1.861. Why don't you take a look at these next examples and try working them out on your calculator? Um, here you're asked to use a calculator to approximate each expression to the nearest hundredth. In the first example, you're given 3 times the parentheses 5.9 squared minus 2 times 5.9 plus 6. And in the second example, you're given the square root of pi minus 1 divided by the square root of 1 plus pi. Take a minute and try these on your own and check back with me when you've completed them. OK, let's say you did. Now remember, both of these examples you were asked to round to the nearest hundredth. So let's enter the first one into the calculator. Uh, what we have is 3 times 5.9 quantity squared minus 2 times 5.9, and then plus 6. Entering that into the calculator, we get 98.63. And since this decimal uh, ends at the 100 spot, we can use the entire answer. So this is equal to 98.63. In the second example, you're asked to take the square root of pi minus 1 and divide it by the square root of 1 plus pi. So entering that into the calculator, we've got the square root of pi minus 1, all of that divided by the square root of 1 plus pi. And the calculator returns the decimal answer 0 0.71909242739. And again, we're asked to round this to the nearest hundredth. So since the uh, 1 is in the hundredth position, followed by a 9, we'll round that up. So our answer will be equal to 0 0.72 after we round it. Now, another thing we're going to look at today is called the distance formula. Uh, you may have already seen the Pythagorean theorem and know that it's used to find the missing side of a right triangle. But what you may not know is that you can use it to find the distance between two points on a coordinate plane. Let's take a look at the distance formula. Distance formula. Suppose that uh, P point x1, y1, and R point x2, y2 are two points on a coordinate plane. The distance between P and R, written d of P comma R, is given by the distance formula, where the distance equals the square root of x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared. Let's take a look at how the Pythagorean theorem is used in, in this. Here you see a Cartesian coordinate system, and what we have are two points put on the plane. We have x1, y1, and x2, y2. What we need to do is find the distance between these two points, which lies along this line. In order to do that, we'll form a right triangle. Drawing in the base of the right triangle here in the horizontal direction and the height in the vertical direction, we know that this x value is x1 and this x value is x2. 
So to find the distance from this point to this point, we would write it as x1 minus x2. Then, doing the same thing in the vertical direction, this point here is y1, and this one down here is y2. So to find the distance between here, that would be given as y1 minus y2. So, using x1 minus x2 as one side of the right triangle, and y1 minus y2 as the other side of the right triangle, we can then use the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between them, which is the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So that would give us x1 minus x2 squared, plus y1 minus y2 squared equals the hypotenuse squared, and then taking the square root to find the distance, we have the distance formula. Now you may notice that the difference x1 minus x2 isn't exactly what we had before, because in the uh, graphic we showed earlier had x2 minus x1, but keep in mind, when we square this, uh, the results do to turn out to be the same. So this is an equivalent form. Another important formula that we need to look at is called the midpoint formula. Let's take a look at that. The midpoint formula. The midpoint of the line segment with, it, with endpoints x1 and y1 and x2 and y2 is given by x1 plus x2 over 2, comma, y1 plus y2 over 2. So let's take a look at an example that you that asks us to use the midpoint formula and the distance formula. Here we're asked to find the distance between point P and Q and the coordinates of the midpoints of the segment joining both P and Q. We're given that point P is the point negative 8, negative 2, and point Q is the point negative 3, negative 5. So in order to find the distance between them, what we need to do is set up the distance formula. So the distance formula is equal to the square root, and now what we need to do is take our points and subtract the x values. Well, the second x value that we were given on point Q was negative 3, minus the first x value of point P was negative 8. So that's our x2 minus x1. And then two that we have to add our y2 minus y1. Well, the second y value was negative 5, and the first y value was negative 2. So we have negative 5 minus the negative 2, and then we need to square that. Simplifying this, we get the square root, and then negative 3 minus negative 8 is really negative 3 plus 8, and negative 3 plus 8 is 5, so we have 5 squared, plus, and then over here in these parentheses, we have negative 5 minus a negative 2, which is negative 5 plus 2, and negative 5 plus 2 is really a negative 3, so we need to square that as well. Working this out further, we have the square root of 25 plus, and now negative 3 squared is positive 9, so it's the square root of 25 plus 9, and now adding the 25 plus the 9, we find that the distance between these two points is given by the square root of 34. Along with finding the distance between these two points, we were also asked to find the midpoint. Let's take a look at the midpoint formula. To find the midpoint between these two points, remember, the midpoint is given by x1 plus x2 divided by 2, and then y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So using this formula with the points that we were given, x1 is given to us as the value negative 8, plus x2, which is given as the value negative 3, all of that divided by 2, and then y1 is the value negative 2, plus y2, which is the value negative 5, all of that divided by 2. Well, negative 8 plus negative 3 gives us negative 11, and negative 2 plus negative 5 gives us negative 7, and then dividing both of them by 2, we end up with the midpoint of this segment is located at the coordinate point, negative 11 halves, negative 7 halves. Or if you change that into a decimal, it would be negative 5.5, negative 3.5. In this section, you've had a chance to look at the real number system. You've seen useful formulas such as the distance formula and the midpoint formula as well. You should continue practicing by doing the exercises in your textbook, and I'll see you next time.